Dear student, Assalamu alaikum. This is the first lecture in the renal system in which we are going to discuss two important subjects nephrotic syndrome and acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Objective is to define the term of nephrotic syndrome and acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, to discuss the etiology and physiology of both conditions, to know clinical presentation and laboratory evaluation of the child with nephrotic syndrome. And nephritis, and to discuss the treatment of nephrotic syndrome and acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. We start with the first subject, which is nephrotic syndrome. It is a common pediatric disorder characterized by the following heavy proteinuria more than 3.5 g per day, or urine protein creatine ratio more than 2, hypoalbuminemia with a serum albumin level less than 2.5 g per deciliter. Presence of edema and lastly hyperlipidemia with the serum cholesterol more than 200 mg per deciliter. Etiology we have two types of nephrotic syndrome idiopathic nephrotic syndrome in about 90% of the case, and the causes of idiopathic nephrotic syndrome include minimal change in nephrotic syndrome, which is the most common type of nephrotic syndrome in children. In addition to that, we have mesangial proliferation and focal segmental. We have also secondary nephrotic syndrome in about 10% of the cases, and may be secondary to systemic disease, such as SLE and phenoxylon burbura, or secondary to infectious agents associated with nephrotic syndrome, including hepatitis B, hepatitis C, malaria, and HIV, or may be secondary to tumor, like lymphoma and leukemia. Pathophysiology. This picture will show the glomerular filtration barrier, which consisting of glomerular basement membrane, fenestrated endothelium on both sides. In nephrotic syndrome, there is extensive effacement of the both sides, which allow an excessive serum or albumin to be leaked from this barrier. Mechanism of development of edema in nephrotic syndrome, as we say, there is a renal glomerular damage which result in proteinuria, hypoproteinemia, and decrease on cortical pressure, which allow the fluid to be leaked from the intravascular compartment to extravascular compartment, resulting in edema. Also, we have, have hypovolemia, which lead to increased secretion of antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone, sodium and water resorption, and increased hydrostatic pressure, and also lead to decrease in the renal blood flow Renin secretion, vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction, and more formation of edema. Clinical manifestation This disease is more common in male, 2 to 1. The most common age of presentation, 2 to 6 years. Edema is the main presenting feature and initially noted around the eye. We call it very orbital edema, especially on waking. In the lower extremity, we call it meeting edema. With the time, may become generalized with development of ascites, pleural effusion, and genital edema in male. This picture will show periorbital edema and beating edema. In addition to that, the patient may have anoroxia, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and hematuria and hypertension is a, a common presentation in nephrotic syndrome. Diagnosis, urine analysis, protein urea usually detected by a dipstick test, and reported as either negative, trace, about 10 to 20 mg per deciliter, 1 plus, about 30 mg per deciliter, 2 plus, about 100 mg per deciliter, 3 plus, about 300 mg per deciliter, and 4 plus, about 2 g per deciliter. In addition to that, a spot urine protein creatine ratio more than 2. The 24-hour urine collection for albumin, usually more than 3.5 grams per day. The renal function test, usually normal. Serum albumin, less than 2.5 grams per deciliter, with the decrease in the total serum protein. The normal level of total serum protein is above 6 to 8 grams per deciliter. Also, we have elevated serum cholesterol, more than 200 mg per deciliter, with a normal level of C3 and C4. Renal biopsy. Renal biopsy is not indicated in the most of the cases 
of nephrotic syndrome in children. This indication in case of when the age of the child is than one year or more than 12 years, when there is a gross hematuria, persistent hypocomplementinemia, impaired renal function, and sustained hypertension. Complication first, we have infection. This is the major complication of nephrotic syndrome. Type of infection are spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, which is present with abdominal pain, tenderness, vomiting, and fever. The most common microorganisms that cause this infection are streptococcal pneumonia and Escherichia coli. Diagnosis by doing peritoneal aspirate and peritoneal leukocyte count. More than 250 cell per cubic millimeter is highly suggestive of a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Treatment by use of third generation sevalosporin, like sevotaxin, or a combination of ampicillin and aminoglycoside for 10 to 14 days. Other type of infection include sepsis, UTI, pneumonia, and cellulitis. What are the causes of increasing susceptibility? of children with nephrotic syndrome to infection. These cause, including urinary loss of IgG, edema which act as a culture media for microorganisms, defective cell mediating immunity, immunosuppressive agent used in treatment of nephrotic syndrome like steroid, defects in the complement cascade from the urinary loss of complement factors, predominantly C3 and C5, as well as the alternative pathway factors B and D, and this will lead to impairment of opsonization of the microorganism. Second complication is arterial and venous thrombosis, which include renal vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and sagittal sinus thrombosis. And this is due to vascular stasis from hemoconcentration and intravascular volume depletion, increased platelet aggregation and number, and change in the coagulation factor levels. Also, there is increase in hepatic production of fibrinogen along with urinary loss of antithrombotic factor, such as antithrombin 3 and protein S. Other complications include obesity and growth retardation, hypertension and renal failure. Treatment of nephrotic syndrome. We have two types of treatment, either specific or non-specific treatment. The non-specific treatment include treatment of infection, as mentioned previously, appropriate diet, diuretics, and observation chart. Diet. Balanced diet consisting of 1.5 to 2 gram per kg per day of protein and adequate calories is recommended. Fat should constitute no more than 30% of total calorie, with the sodium restriction to less than 1.5 gram per day. Observation chart for child with nephrotic syndrome should be include the following vital signs, especially blood pressure, body weight, urine albumin, and urine output. Diuretics. Oral diuretics, chlorothiazide or spironolactone for mild to moderate edema. For severe edema, we can use intravenous chlorothiazide, 10 mg per kg per day BID, or frosamide 1 to 2 mg per kg per dose BID. And in severe case, we can use intravenous 25% albumin, 0.5 to 1 gram albumin per kg, as a slow infusion, followed by furosemide 1 to 2 mg per kg per dose intravenously to avoid hypervolemia. Specific treatment. Specific treatment of nephrotic syndrome is prednisolone, 60 mg per meter square per day or 2 mg per kg per day, maximum of 60 mg daily as a single daily dose for four to six weeks. And the most of children with minimal change in nephrotic syndrome responds to daily prednisolone therapy quickly within the first two to three weeks of treatment. And after the initial four to six week course of steroid, the dose is tapered to 40 mg per meter square per day on alternate days or 1.5 mg per kg per day on alternate days and slowly taper for a period ranging from 8 weeks to 5 months. We have certain important definition in nephrotic syndrome. The first one is relapse. Relapse of nephrotic syndrome is defined as 
the first morning urine protein creatinine ratio more than 2 or more than or equal 3 plus protein on urine domestic testing for 3 consecutive days with the presence of edema. Frequent relapse is 4 or more relapse per year. Also we have steroid resistance. Steroid resistance is an ability to induce remission within 8 weeks of daily divided dose of steroid. Steroid dependent. Steroid dependent is a relapse during the steroid tapering or relapse within two weeks of discontinuation of the therapy. Alternative agents. These are drug other than steroid used in the treatment of nephrotic syndrome. The indication for use of these agents include frequent relapse, steroid resistance, steroid dependent and development of severe steroid toxicity in form of cushionoid appearance, hypertension, cataract and growth failure. These agents include cyclophosphamide, 2 mg per kg per day, and as a single dose for 8 to 12 weeks, with alternative day prednisolone therapy, and during the course of cyclophosphamide therapy, white PC count must be monitoring weekly, and withhold if the count is less than 5,000 per cubic millimeter. Side effects of this drug include neutropenia, hemorrhagic cystitis, Elobitia, sterility, and increased risk of future malignancy. Other agents can be used like calcineurin inhibitors, cyclosporine, or tacrolimus, and these recommended as initial therapy for children with steroid resistance nephrotic syndrome. Also, we have mycophenolate, can be maintained remission in children with steroid dependent or frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome. Lifamizole, which is an anti-helmetic agent with immune modulatory effect that has been shown to reduce the risk of relapse in comparison to prednisolone. And lastly, we have rituximab, which is a monoclonal antibody against CD20, may be helpful in children with steroid-dependent and or steroid-resistant nephrotic syndrome. Family counseling. The following point should be explained to the family. First, the condition is not infectious or hereditary, and patient is unlikely to develop chronic renal diseases, especially in steroid-responsive nephrotic syndrome. There is a high percentage will achieve complete remission, especially in steroid-responsive nephrotic syndrome, and the patient may have some relapse that decrease in the frequency when increasing age, and the patient should be bring medical attention if develop abdominal pain, fever, or look ill. Diet, as mentioned in the previous slides. Vaccination. Patient with nephrotic syndrome receiving a dose equivalent to 2 mg per kg per day or prednisolone or more for more than two weeks, consider as immunocompromised patient. Live vaccine should only administrate it once the child is off steroid for six weeks while the routine non-living viral vaccine should be administrated according to their recommended schedules. The second subject in our lecture is acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. This disease is a classical example of acute nephritic syndrome and characterized by sudden onset of gross hematuria, edema, hypertension, and renal insufficiency. Etiology to usually follow infection with a certain nephratogenic strain of a group A streptococcal infection of upper respiratory tract or skin. Nephritis following pharyngeal streptococcal infection is more common in cold climate and children at school age, while those following skin infection is more common in hot climate and preschool age children. This is picture will show in Betaigo which is a crested lesion around the mouth and here there is acute tonsillitis with bus formation. Clinical features. This disease is rare before age of 3 years, the commonest age of presentation 5 to 12 years and usually develop 1 to 2 weeks after pharyngitis or 3 to 6 weeks after skin infection. The onset is abrupt and the patient develop Dark color urine, mild orbital edema, decrease in urine output, 
flank abdominal pain, low grade fever, and hypertension. Acute hypertension may cause headache, vomiting, disturbed consciousness level, and even convulsion. We call it hypertensive encephalopathy. Other patients may develop dyspnea, tachypnea, tender hepatomegaly due to heart failure. The acute phase usually lasts six to eight weeks. Lab finding. Generally, urine examination demonstrate RBC hematuria and RBC cast. There is a mild to moderate proteinuria, but less than 2 gram per 24 hour. Leukocytes are common. Renal function test, blood urea and serum creatinine usually elevated. Chest x-ray will show pulmonary congestion. Throat swab for culture and sensitivity. The serum C3 level usually reduced. We have tests to confirm the recent streptococcal infection, which include elevated ASO titer more than 250, but this titer is rarely raised after skin infection. We also have deoxyribonuclease, DNA's B antigen is more sensitive, and streptozyme test, which is light agglutinating test to detect antibody to streptolysine O. DNAs B and hyaluronidase. Treatment. There is no specific treatment for acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The management is that of renal failure. But 10 days of systemic antibody therapy with penicillin is recommended to limit the spread of microorganisms. Antihypertensive agent, including diuretic, calcium channel blocker. Angiotensin converted enzyme inhibitor for treatment of hypertension. Prognosis complete recovery occur in more than 95% of the case. Recurrence are extremely rare, and less than 2% of the case may pass in chronic renal insufficiency. Complication First, we have acute renal failure, as we say, less than 2% of the case. Volume overload. Heart failure, and this is due to hypertension and volume overload. And we also have hypertensive encephalopathy. Hypertension is seen in about 60% of patients and associated with hypertensive encephalopathy in about 10% of the case. Presentation presented with headache, vomiting, disturbed consciousness, and even convulsion. Hypertensive encephalopathy it is a medical emergency and should be treated urgently. Continuous infusion of sodium nitroprusside 0.5 to 1 microgram per kg per minute or labitolol 0.25 to 3 milligram per kg per hour infusion or osmolol 150 to 300 microgram per kg per minute. For more information, you can refer to Nelson Textbook of Pediatric and Illustrated Textbook of Pediatric and thank you for your listening.